Hi, I'm Don Feaster. I'm uh, here with Meredith Blackwell. I'm uh, Meredith. And uh, we are doing interviews with mycologists for the oral history project that Meredith initiated. We're here in Minneapolis, and it's 2019, and we're here with Biddy Roy. Hello. <laughs> so, Biddy, tell us how your life started. Where were you born? Uh, what was your family like? Or? So I was born in Colorado. Um, I grew up about four miles outside of Aspen. Ooh. Um, my father was an architect, and my mother was essentially a housewife, although she seemed to do all kinds of things. Yeah. Like activities in the town? She did lots of activities in town, social. and then she started working in her friend's restaurants uh -huh. in Aspen when I was in junior high school. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, were you interested in fungi very early, or? Yes, actually, oh, oddly you're enough. One of the few. <laughs> um, well, when I was in high school, I was fascinated by the bolletes that looked like pancakes along the trails in the mountains. Um, and then I found a Steminitis, and I brought it into my high school biology teacher, and he told me it was rare which is probably the best thing you can tell a high school kid, even though it was totally not true, <laughs> <laughs> which I figured out later. But um, that, that kind of got me, that got me started. Then, um, you know, college was a little bit of a drawn out affair because I had to pay for it myself. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it took me several years. And I started off in the wrong place, which was in Vermont, and ended up in the right place, which was on the West Coast at Evergreen. And I took, uh, mushrooms from Mike Fugue. And then uh, there was a hiatus because I had a boyfriend who was interested in mycology and so I stopped doing it. it why? Really bad. Why? <laughs> I know. Why? You could have done why? it together. <laughs> could have done it together so I did paleo instead. And then um, we split up. He went to plants, I went to fungi. So we were stopping each other from doing the right things I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so then I did graduate work um, in population ecology, but it was because the fungus was killing the plants. Okay, where was that? Claremont Graduate School. Okay. So Dick Benjamin was oh. the person who gave me my um, prelim exams. Amazing. Huh. Yeah. yeah. So did you know him very well? I wouldn't say I knew him very well. He, um, you know, I always admired his drawings. You could not help but yeah. admire his drawings. They were, they were Zygo my seat. Oh. Yeah, and uh, he, um, he told me that there was nothing new to be found out about rust fungi and that I shouldn't study them. Um, <laughs> Which so, encouraged you. Oh, of course, <laughs> being the stubborn sort, it was exactly <laughs> probably at that point the right thing to tell, tell me, but it was a little hard nonetheless because I admired him very much. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of where it started. And, and I ended up with a PhD advisor who knew nothing about fungi, but because she was from first generation from Poland, she was Eastern European and loved fungi. Uh -huh. And so when I told her I wanted to do this project, she said, you know, it's really totally out of what I do, but I'll support you in it. And, and where was, was this? That was Paulette mm -hmm. Mirzacudek. And what was the project? So I was working on these, I started working on these fungi that um, smelled like lilacs and attracted insects and uh, were flower mimics and they killed their hosts. And so for her that was interesting because she was interested in how um, asexual plants and sexual plants, how they escape from, um, well from pathogens partly, but also how, how you end up with, with asexual species arising at all and how they survive long term, um, given that sex allows you to escape better. Um, and, I, and my hosts were asexual. They reproduced apomictically and so I what, worked on frequency dependent they? selection. <laughs> and that was, my, that was my dissertation. What were the plants? The plants were in the mustard family. The genus was then Erebus. It oh, is now, okay, so that, is now Bucharest. Okay, that's the yeah. yeah. famous study you did. Yeah, but, it, <coughs> but my dissertation was on frequency dependent selection mm -hmm. because she was a population ecologist and my fungus killed my host plants. Uh, and so I sort of saved up the mimicry stuff for later when I wrote a postdoctoral fellowship and got. And that's, um, 
And yeah. where were you through that? For that, I chose to go to UC Davis mm -hmm. because um, there was a person there whose ecological work I really admired, Maureen Stanton. Mm -hmm. um, and I really liked the Center for Population Ecology. Again, you know, my background, I was a population ecologist. I really didn't think of myself as a mycologist for another probably 10 years. Um, and it was really, in many ways, um, probably George Carroll was the one who convinced me I was actually a mycologist. <laughs> well, <laughs> you studied fungi. That will take right, you in. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, and over time, I've learned a lot of mycology. But, uh, you know, the interest has been there for a long time. I just didn't, I thought of myself as an ecologist. And I realized today that I've divided my time between the Ecological Society and the Mycological Society. I've been an editor for both, for both society journals. Um, and it was just kind of the way it worked out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, and as I remember, you were one of the first people I knew who started being interested in the effects of global warming. I think that's probably true, and that was because I grew up in the mountains, mm -hmm. and we saw the effects really early. And um, John Hart worked at the Rocky Mountain Biological Lab, which is mm -hmm. where I did my dissertation work and most of my postdoc work. And he started an experiment on climate change in 1991. Oh. Okay, so, you know, we were talking early. about it really early. Mm -hmm. uh, and since John was a, was a good friend and I'd been a, involved with the experiment really since its inception, mm -hmm. kind of peripherally, I said, John, can I sample your experiment? And he said, of course. And so, so what, what was it, what were his clues to start looking at it? Did, do you know exactly? Yeah, so the clues were that we were losing, um, we didn't really have glaciers in Colorado, but we had permanent snow fields. Mm -hmm. And those were going away. Okay, so you could see that. Um, we were seeing things like robins coming back earlier and earlier, mm -hmm. the marmots coming out earlier and earlier. Um, and based on physics, because John was really a physicist, he I think converted much earlier than most people because he was looking at the physical data. Okay. That's what it was. Um, yeah, so it was the yeah. physical data and, and it was you know, prescient to set up that experiment to early and that experiment is still continuing to this day. Mm -hmm. And the amount of change that's already happened is phenomenal. You know, the sagebrush has, has increased in the plots and um, things like that. Over so twenty years only. Twenty uh, well, now it's it's been closer to 25, almost, mm -hmm. it's getting close to 30 years mm -hmm. that experiment's been running. Yeah. So, you know, and many of the things that, that they predicted would happen, you know, some of them happened short term, but some of them were much longer term. So you have to do experiments for a long time. Yeah. 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 So? So tell us a little bit about floral mimics and uh, all this that you've discovered about those? So, I think what I have found so interesting about fungi is that they interact with other organisms all the time. Uh, you know, mycologists tend to look at the fungi, and I tend to look at, at how, okay, this fungus is being pollinated, because that's essentially what these floral mimics are doing. The stage of the fungus where the insects visit is exactly analogous to pollination. Different mating types on different plants, got to get the spores together in order to go to the next stage. Um, and it's really a parasitism of pollination. You know, and so the insects were interacting with flowers. The fungus, many fungi cause brooms on their plants. This one happened to be bright yellow, producing nectar, boom. <laughs> you get insect attraction really, you know, pretty rapidly. Mm -hmm. And literally every rust fungus system that I've looked at where spermatia are produced on the surface of the leaves, you get insect visits. Hmm. You know, so it's, it's pretty easy to understand how that system, you know, given, you know, if, if there's a mutation that then ends up with 
leafy-like structures, it's going to be favored because the insects are attracted to Especially it Especially with more. color. Huh? Especially with color and, and odor. And mm. odor and um, the fact that they're stealing from the hosts in order to produce sugars, mm -hmm. right? Fungus isn't doing any of this. It's just taking advantage of the host. Mm -hmm. It's pulling it all from the host. Um, so, <coughs> what about the orchids? What about the orchids? So, Those so the so first neat. system was fungi mimicking flowers. Dracula orchids mimic fungi. Okay, so that's amazing. Looked at that <laughs> system, and and you know, I read about it during my, and I actually put a slide into my dissertation talk of this Dracula orchid that was an eight. It's a photograph from AJB, and uh, I said that would be an interesting thing to look at, and then promptly forgot it until Bren Dentinger wrote mm -hmm. to me and said, "Would you like to write a grant about this?" <laughs> and I said, "Oh yeah." <laughs> so we did, and um, did that work in Ecuador, and the labellum of the orchids is the same size, shape color fragrances of the most common co-occurring fungi. It's really remarkable. And talking about interactions, we just put out a paper, it just came out, 78 species of flies that are associated with these orchids. Wow. Some of which are specialists on the orchids, some are specialists on the fungi, and a lot of them are confused and going in between. At the <laughs> same, at the same site. At the same site. Hmm. Yeah, and hey, talk about mega diversity. Ecuador is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and and you made models, didn't you? We did. We that was really neat. So mm -hmm. going to the to the Bell Museum last night was really fun because we worked with a museum artist whose job had been for many years. Her name is Melinda Barnabas, to make museum models look like what they were supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so she came into our system and she said, oh, well you, we can't have, my paints can't be on the surface because then the insects will smell them. So she embedded her coloring agents inside our scentless silica so that, so that these things really looked like flowers, mm -hmm. which were basically 3D printed. Yeah. She figured out how to do all of that. Um, so then we could make flowers two times as big or twice as small. Uh -huh. We could change colors. We could change fragrances. We could add fragrances to the flowers. It was a, a really cool system. And she came down and worked with us in the field. First one year in order to design them. And then the next year she came back to work with us. And we actually did the That's experiments. That's pretty amazing. It was remarkable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and she's half Peruvian, and so, you know, just the interactions with um, with the local people were just wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she spoke Spanish, oh, her Spanish bilingual. Was beautiful. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. So, and she was just one of these really happy, cheerful people. And so, mm -hmm. literally, everybody who worked in Ecuador has been stupendous. You know, my PhD student on the project. Tobias, um, he's, he's Canadian, so he's born diplomat. <laughs> 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 or certainly conflict adverse, maybe. Conflict adverse, <laughs> and, and also fluent in Spanish, and you know, it was just a delight. So it was, it was also another really fun project. And yeah. has Bryn continued this? No, so yeah. Bryn, he, Bryn's interest was in the he wanted to know who, who, what, the orchids were mimicking. Oh, so okay. we've worked, we're in the process now, we now have close to 2,000 collections from our site in Ecuador. Um, we're putting together a, a essentially a, a floristic paper uh, mm. because we, we sampled at different sites uh, in plots of the same size, over multiple years. Um, so we can say a lot about the spatial arrangement of the fungi that are at this incredible cloud forest in Ecuador. 
Um, and uh, along with all the measurements of how similar they are to these orchids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is in a separate paper. But so we'll have a, we're working on a sort of mm -hmm. paper now. He, Bryn, Tommy Jenkinson, who came along as field assistant for two years, uh, myself, uh, Rue Vandegrift, and Danny Newman. Okay. So among us, we've amassed quite a collection. Well, years ago when I was at Hope College, and that was, what, 40 years ago now, but I got two papers by a German scientist who was studying, you know, the, the orchids, but you've got so much further. Yeah, it's well, amazing. Actually, you know, I was able to translate those papers because my yeah. lived in Switzerland for six years. And well, yeah. I took German, but <laughs> it was very difficult for me. But yours, I'm sure, was easier. Come. No, it wasn't easier. I had to learn it in Switzerland, but it, mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> yeah, but you, by then, you knew when you started translating the papers. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but that was the first time, I, and I just thought it was amazing. And then your work came along, yeah. so it was really exciting for me. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I, should, I should also say that Probably one of my biggest influences was actually Walt Sundberg. Really? Um, and how's the connection? Yeah. There? The connection there is that I was working on my master's degree in paleobotany in Illinois. Okay. And for fun, I took forest pathology. And then it was Walt's With Walt's Walt. course. And, you know, I've never seen a healthy plant since. <laughs> <laughs> Well. And, and that's how I started working on pathogens, really, was mm -hmm. Walt. Okay. Yeah. And right So, 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 so I'm in, in lineage, I'm an indirect from Tears. I'm a Tearsian lineage. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, that's great to get you in there somewhere. We'll have yeah. to add you with a footnote <laughs> explaining yeah. all this. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, Walt won one of the teaching awards a I few know, years I wrote back. him an extensive letter about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it shows then. Well, he, he did this... Um, uh, a Friday afternoon applied mycology, where we had to bring in something related to, to fungi, you know, bread or tempeh, and you know, we beer, of course. And Tell about it. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah. Well. All right. It's been great. Yeah. Thanks thank for you. telling us all thank this. You. It was really yeah. neat.